Hello everyone, welcome back to online class. I am Akka Mahadevi from Upper Public School. So today I am here with the topic, separation of substances. So what do you mean by separation and what do you mean by substances? So here, what do you mean by separation? It is a process of separating harmful or non-useful substances from useful substances. So here, what do you mean by separation? It is a process of separating harmful or non-useful substances from useful substances is called separation. So what do you mean by substances? Any material that possesses physical properties any material that possesses physical properties is called a substances Isn't it? So here the definition of separation is it is a process of separating harmful or non-useful substances from useful substances. And here what do you mean by substances? Any material that possesses physical properties is called a substances. So as we all know that in our daily life we see many instances, isn't it? Where we separate the substances from a mixture of materials. Isn't it? We see many materials. For example, we take a cup of tea. Okay, so tea leaves here, the examples for separation comes like tea leaves are separated from tea, isn't it? Grains are separated from stalks and even churning of curd, from churning, what we obtain? We obtain butter and even in the third chapter we learn, that is fiber to fabric I think. So in that lesson what we learn? We learn cotton is separated from the seeds by which process? By the process called ginning, isn't it? So let us discuss in brief about these examples. Okay, so first, so let me take a cup of tea. Okay, so let me take a cup of tea. So what are the materials we require to prepare this tea? We require water, milk, Sugar and teas, isn't it? So these are the materials which we require to prepare tea. So after preparing tea, we will pour this tea to a cup. So how we will pour? Directly or we do something before that? Guess, can you guess what we can do? Exactly. We use this strainer. Why do we use this strainer? Because this strainer separates the tea leaves, isn't it? So, this strainer separates the tea leaves from the liquid. So, here, from tea. So, what we get? We get the two components, 
that is liquid liquid in the sense like tea and one more component we get what is that tea leaves isn't it so from this tea we get the two components that is liquid tea and that one more is tea leaves so here which is the useful component and which is the non useful component so liquid the tea which we drink is useful isn't it and here tea leaves we eat tea leaves no so here the tea leaves are non useful isn't it so here we get the two components from this tea so one is useful component and the another one is non useful component the useful component is tea which we drink isn't it and here the non useful component is tea leaves we will throw it. isn't it we will throw we will not use this tea leaves so this is about the example of T. So now next we will take one more example. So can you identify what is this? This is a wheat plant. So this is a rough diagram of wheat plant. So what we get from this wheat plant? There are two components which we get. One is grains we get. and one more is stalks so here also from wheat plant we get the two components that is grains and stalks so now tell me which is useful and non useful component here exactly grains is useful components isn't it so stalks are non useful components so why we are grains are useful because we eat grains because we eat but stalks we don't eat but these stalks are useful we can give these stalks to animals animals can feed animals can feed this stalks isn't it so from wheat plant again we get the two components one is useful component and the and one more is non useful component so the useful component is grains and the non useful component is stalks so why we call useful component because we eat grains and why do we call non useful component because we don't eat stalks isn't it so this is the example of wheat plant so one more example is there let me tell you so one more example is churning of curd okay so what do you mean by this churning of curd so you can open your textbook and you can see the figure 5.2 can you see here this is a method from which we can separate butter isn't it so for this we call churning churning of curd so by churning of curd we get two components which are those we get butter isn't it and even we get butter so now can you tell any here that one is useful and non useful components no because both are here Useful components. In the previous example, we saw that 
one will be useful and one will be non useful but here in the churning of uh, curd we get the two components which both are useful so here butter butter we eat and butter milk we drink isn't it so here for churning of curd we get the two components one is butter and one is butter milk so butter is also a useful component and even butter milk is also a useful component because here butter we eat so that it is a useful component and here butter milk we drink so this is also a useful component isn't it so now these are the examples of separation so now next so next we will see why do we separate substances isn't it so why do we need why do we separate substances isn't it so this is a question that why do we separate substances so just open your book page number 36 Table five point one. So look at that table. So here, first one is separation process. So the first one is separation process, and the second one is purpose for which. we do the separation and third column is what do we do what do we do with the separated components separated components So look at this table carefully. So here the first one separation process. What is the process? Separate stones from separate stones from rice. So the first process is separate. stones from rice and the second one is churning milk to obtain butter and the third one is separate tea leaves so these three are the separation process now here they have given what are the purpose for which we do the separation so first one here a to separate two different but useful components okay so this is a and b to remove non useful to remove non useful components isn't it so the c one to remove impurities to remove impurities or harmful components harmful 
components. So now here, what do we do with the separated components? So what we are going to do with the separated components? So here, A1, like first one is, we throw away the soil component. And second one is, we throw away the impurities and the third one is we use both the components. So by seeing this table what you came to know, whether they are in a, like they are in a correct statement, like separate stones from rice, this we will do for the purpose to separate two different but useful components. No, here the statements are jumbled. They are not in a proper way. So now we should make it in a proper way. So the first one, separate stones from rice. So why do we separate stones from rice? Among these three, you should choose one. So which is that? To separate two different but useful components is correct answer. To remove non-useful components or to remove impurities or harmful components. So here, when the word stones comes in rice, so stones it is a harmful component and even it is impurities, isn't it? So the first answer is here. The, for the purpose for which we do separate is to remove the impurities or harmful components. Isn't it? So what do we do with the separated components? So among these three, what we do? So when the word impurities comes here, here also we throw away the impurities. Isn't it? So here the answer is second one. We throw the impurities. Isn't it? So next, churning milk to obtain butter. So after churning milk, we obtain butter. So what is the purpose here? Here the purpose for this is, second one is to separate two different but useful components. As we seen in the early example that uh, churning milk, from churning of milk we get the two components, isn't it? One is butter and one more is buttermilk. So here, to separate two different, they are different, butter and buttermilk, but useful components. So here, churning milk to obtain butter is a two different but useful components. A. And what do we do with the separated components? As I said, like we use both the components. Okay. So here, the answer is three. We use both the components. Even we use butter and even we use buttermilk also. So the last one is separate tea leaves. So what is the purpose of separating this tea leaves? So here among the three, the one which is left is B. Here so tea leaves are non-useful. Even this also we learned in the example. Tea leaves are non-useful components so that we do separation. So here, third one is to remove non-useful components and here, what we do? What do we do with the separated components? Here, we throw away the soil component. Answer is here. A. Understood this table? So once I recall this, here, this column is separation process, purpose for which we do the separation and here, what do we do with the separated components? So first we take the example of separated stones from rice. So why do we separate stones from rice? To remove impurities or harmful components, isn't it? So what do we do with the separated components? We throw away the impurities. So here, we throw away the stones which are present in the rice, isn't it? So next one is... Churning milk to obtain butter. So here by churning, what are the useful components which we get? There are 
two useful components to separate two different but useful components so what do we do with the separated components here so we use both the components isn't it so next last one is separate tea leaves so why do we separate tea leaves so again the purpose for separation is here to remove non useful components so here tea leaves are non useful components so why what do we do with the separated components we throw away the solid component isn't it so this is about why do we separate substances so what do we understood that why do we separate substances so let me write here so the first point why do we separate substances to separate harmful substances from a make sure okay here to separate harmful substances from a mixture and the example for this is separating so harmful the word harmful comes so we are what we separate separating stones from Grains or pulses, isn't it? So this is to separate harmful substances from a mixture. So second one, to separate non-useful. To separate non-useful substances from a mixture. So here, what we are separating? Non-useful substances. What will be the example for this? Exactly, separating tea leaves. So here we are separating tea leaves from liquid. Okay. So in the first, we learn that to separate harmful substances from a mixture. The example is. separating stones from grains or pulses and the second one is to separate non useful components from a mixture and the example is separating tea leaves from liquid and one more we separate two useful components we separate two useful components if we want to use them separately so here we separate two useful components if we want to use them separately an example for this is turning off Curl. So from this journey, we get the two useful components. 
we, that we want to use them separately. What are the two components which we are using separately? One is butter and one more is buttermilk. Isn't it? So this is about why do we separate substances. So next we will learn about few methods of separation. So which are the methods of separation? Let us discuss, okay? So which are the methods of separation? So there are few methods like hand picking, Threshing, winnowing, sieving, sedimentation, decantation, filtration, evaporation, and condensation. So let me write here methods of separation. So, which are the methods? First one is hand picking, threshing, binocuring, sealing. Sedimentation, sixth one is decantation, filtration, evaporation, and condensation. So, these are the methods from which we can separate the substances. Okay. So, first let us discuss about this hand picking. So, what do you mean by hand picking? know that every month we'll bring ration to our home, isn't it? So we bring a packet of rice, we bring packet of dal, we bring packets of so many grains and pulses, isn't it? So when we bring those packets, shall we use those packets directly for cooking? For example, take a packet of rice. I want to prepare rice. Okay. So I need rice, which I brought from packet. Okay. So, I need rice from the packet which I brought from market. So, can I take directly rice from the packet and cook food? Or shall I remove the impurities which are present in the packet? So, now you might be thinking that what are the impurities which are present in the rice, isn't it? So, there might be small Stones, dirt particles, and even small insects. Isn't it? And even sometimes some other grains may also be added in the rice. 
some other grains or pulses. Okay, so these are the impurities which we find in the packet of rice which we brought from market, isn't it? So now I should remove these impurities. So how I should remove? By using a hand. So here these impurities can be removed by using our hands. So let me write here. Pulses or grains have impurities like as I discussed just now. So what are the impurities which might be present? Small stones. Next, dirt particles. Small insects. And even some other grains or pulses. Okay, so here, what are the impurities which are present in pulses or grains? Stones, small stones, dirt particles, even sometimes small insects, and even other grains may also present in the rice. So, what do we do with those impurities? We will remove those impurities. Remove those impurities. How do we remove? As I said earlier, that remove those impurities by using our hand. So, we remove these impurities from the grains or pulses by using our hands. So, for that process, we call hand picking. So, even you can see the diagram of this hand picking. Page number 36, 5.3. So, here a man who is picking out the impurities from the grains or pulses, isn't it? So now, my question is whether hand picking can be used to separate all the substances of, from a mixture? Let us see. So, my question is whether hand picking whether this hand picking can be used to separate all the substances from a mixture that we will discuss in next class okay hope you all understood this class thank you stay home stay happy